Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and I'm, you're gonna, we're going to have a very interesting show, so get your tea, get your coffee, and sit back, and maybe a little pad to write a few things on. We're just going to go through the whole educational a series, if you will, about um, about the about the legal use of marijuana, and we're going to go to its first exception. And how, how how was accepted in society? When did it get in society? And bring it all the way up to today. And we're fortunate to have with us someone that's uh, that's well read on the subject. Uh, he himself was was, uh, was under the medical marijuana law. Correct. You know. And uh, and so he, he's an activist in his own rights uh, in that arena, but he's very very knowledgeable, both from the legal side, and just from a, as a user from a medical marijuana side. So I think we're going to have quite an interesting show, and I think what we may do is that we may even open up the lines uh, in the second half hour just to kind of give you maybe there might be some input or whatever. Uh, my guest today is a gentleman. My name is James Barber. I've been knowing James for a number of years. About 20. About 20 years. Gee, that's a well, time long flies. time. <laughs> so we're gonna. So James is gonna just take us to the, to the to the ropes, ropes, if you will, and and I think we're gonna have a very interesting show. But before I do that, as you note, I've um, I've always maintained my my cap, my cover, if you will, my Vietnam notation. It's it's on the it's on the hat with a few rivers or whatever. Yes, I was a, I did a tour in, in Vietnam and. Uh, and I was in the Marine Corps during that particular time. But the reason why I'm doing this uh, ongoing and making it a point to, to say something about this every, in every show is that um, it's very important that, uh, that the populace know the, uh, the, the severity of the issue with reference to veterans. Uh, some of them are really hurting pretty in, in dire need, if you will. And so I'm encouraging all of you, whether you're a family member, or whatever, uh, daughters, or whatever, uh, to encourage the vets to go and and sign up, if you will, uh, at the VA, uh, because there might be issues that he might be able to, there might be beneficial issues, if you will, that he might be able to take advantage of, and and um, you know, and it's very important because, in all due respect, a lot of us don't realize this, but but you know, if it wasn't for the vet, if you will, we wouldn't be sitting here today. Correct. Because uh, often, you know, uh, the folks who normally go are the little people. You know, and, and we don't have a draft today, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, that, that, I think that's a good melting pot. We should have had the draft uh, on an ongoing basis, as far as I'm concerned. It's a good melting pot. I, think, uh, I mean, we, the issue of race wouldn't be as so dominant today if, if everybody was all of a sudden serving in the, serving in the military. But anyway, but you know, we, we it's a whole different day to date, but, but surely we need to support the vets. You de definitely need to support the vets, and I will continue to do that. I have, like I said, I'm a vet myself. And I just, this is just a reminder. So I will always open up my show with, um, with that little notation, and hopefully you will take advantage of it and, and contact your loved ones who are vets, uh, both from Korea, Vietnam, and, and, and Iraq, and the, the whole gamut of it all, okay? All right, now let's just get right into the show. James, how you doing? Doing all right. Good, good, good. Doing well? I'm doing okay today. Good, 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 good. I haven't had a seizure this weekend. Is that right? So that's... that's right. Oh. I'm wood. Oh, good. That's good for you. Absolutely. God bless you. Well, James, let's get right into this business uh, from a historical standpoint. When was marijuana introduced uh, within our society? About 5,000 years ago. 5,000 years ago. In what capacity? Uh, they were, it, it was used as medicine. This me is really medicine? Yeah, back in ancient times. It's been grown all over the world and used as medicine for, dec for centuries. Hmm. Hmm. And the only society that um, doesn't recognize it or, or has done anything to, about it is the United States mm -hmm. that came out with the Controlled Substances Act. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now bring it, bring it to the United States. Where, where, are we, where, where are we then? Well, right now we're on the tipping point mm -hmm. of uh, recognizing state laws for, the, for medical marijuana. Um, the federal government has come down with a, I believe it's an eight, eight or nine point um, bullet point test of where they're they're going to spend their money in, in the realm of enforcing the uh, Controlled Substances Act with other crimes. Mm. So, for instance, it is a crime from the Fed side. Well, according to the federal government, it's still a crime because it's a Schedule One 
drug and they, they refuse to reschedule. Although they um, recognize it under um, dronabinol, mm -hmm. which is an isomer from the mm -hmm. THC isomer. Mm -hmm. um, they first um, said it was a, a um, synthetic isomer and then they realized, oops, they made a mistake and realized that it was actually from the mm -hmm. uh, cannabis sativa L plant. Mm -hmm. You know, you had mentioned when we were talking before we got on the show that some like within the United States, they were selling marijuana across the across the counter and whether they mix it in alcohol or that was uh, back in the thirties. In the thirties? Mm -hmm. Okay. That was I think it was like in the eighteen hundreds they started doing that. Mm -hmm. So it legal. Legally, yeah, in a pharmacy. In a pharmacy. In a pharmacy. And just right over the counter. Right over the counter. You can just ask for what. And go in there with your prescription from your doctor, and and it's filled. Huh. So I mean, the doctors would prescribe it to a doctor at that point in time. Correct. Okay. So now, 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 when I think, from I was from a late student standpoint, like myself, for instance, I remember when the medical marijuana discussions were coming onto the table here in, in the Portland metropolitan area. And uh, that was going through a process. At which point there was there had been a couple of them, some of them that had failed. Right. But, um, I think but Paul Stanford um, put forth a couple of them back in the eight, um, late 80s or early 90s. Okay. It right. Failed, and then they had to redo it, and then it finally passed. Yeah, in or in, or here, here in Oregon. In Oregon. Here in Oregon. Okay. So then, how is that program uh, to date? What, what do you think? How, how do you rate this program to date? I think it's a pretty good program. Um, so to speak, but I, I'm, I don't like the registration system of it, okay. which is the patient identification card system that they have. And what is that process? You, you have to go. Well, on. you have to fill out an application, um, okay. pay fees. Um, it depends on where you're at and those who you are and what your conditions are and um, whether you're like um, SSI. They give uh, breaks for that. And I think it's maybe twenty dollars. They might have changed that over the years. I haven't had mine uh, expired in two thousand twelve. Okay. So I haven't been up on the the Oregon um, how much they're charging now. Hmm. Mm. But now you're residing in Washington, right? Correct. In Washington. Now, do they have a marijuana law? And do they, they have marijuana certification process too. Um, actually, the certification process there is a lot different. You just go to your doctor and get. Uh, authorized through your doctor and no cost carry a card well it's a cost to your you know the to see a physician oh yeah okay, okay. Um, or if you have insurance it's free okay okay um, and they just write an authorization for you on your on a um, okay. prescription pad but how do you compare that with oregon um and it's not there's no registry in in washington it's um a more of a privacy issue um if you have a registry that means that the federal government can go in and take the registry or subpoena the registry for specific people mm -hmm. and all the information is there so what you've basically done is admitted to a federal crime so when you go and you get these types of documents um the federal government wants to come in and nail you yeah all they need to do is grab all your information from these files interesting and you're you're a cook goose <laughs> 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 um it happened to me uh, back in uh a few years back uh, through THCF Medical Clinic. And that's, the that's the medical marijuana? That's the medical marijuana program, and they went after my records. In Oregon? Here in Oregon and Washington. And then uh, the state decided that they wanted to charge me for uh, less than 10 grams, and I got charged and prosecuted. Mm -hmm. And what's the consequences of that? Um, it's a misdemeanor. Okay. Um, depending on the judge's discretion on what they want to do. Um, it's a ma uh, mandatory one day, or they can change that into um, probation of some sort. Mm -hmm. And during that particular time, can you use medical marijuana? That's uh, up to the judge. Okay, that's all through the... the that's liberty. all through the judicial process and the discretion of the judge on I whether see. he thinks you're trying to milk the system or whether you really have right. a medical right. condition yeah. and... and so forth and so on. Now, you know, now we're, we're at a point now that it's not just medical marijuana. And by, by the way, how many states recognize medical marijuana? I believe in it's roughly around 23 now. Mm. I think that's the number we're up to. But most of your major ones like California and New York. Uh, yeah, the, all, all the West Coast ones yeah. recognize medical yeah. marijuana. Okay, okay. 
There's a few of them, a few spots in there that, that don't. Right. Kind of like um, Idaho, Utah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so now, now we, we've jumped. Let's get into this other era, and that is uh, the Colorado situation. Where is that at? Well, that, they, all, depend, they, they that all depends basically. on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. If you talk to a patient, they're going right on. If you talk to somebody that's a recreational user, they go right on. If you talk to the lawyers who represent some of the businesses, they're not too happy. Now, the businesses from the center, these are folks now that are selling marijuana. Correct. Right? These are ones that have licenses. They have medical uh, marijuana uh, dispensary licenses, um, recreational licenses. And the public has the right to smoke marijuana. Correct. And what about possession? Uh, how much? Possession, too. I, th I believe it's one ounce. One ounce? And well, how does that represent to a, to a joint, if you will? Like a cigar. 28 joints, 28 so 28, 28 joints. So 28 cigars, you're allowed to be, be able to carry it. Anyway, mm -hmm. smoke it in public? No, you can't smoke it in public. That's illegal still. So what do you, where, 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 where do they allow you to smoke? In your home or in, um, in Colorado, they have clubs that you can go sit in and smoke in. Um, but it's basically um, home use is what they've authorized it for. Okay. Okay. Now in Colorado, they've kind of expanded that out to uh, clubs. <coughs> Excuse me. To different clubs that um, are private clubs where you can go in and actually sit down and enjoy what you've purchased. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to travel all the way home. Okay. Okay. And since it's a social thing now, mm -hmm. it's you know kind of being treated like alcohol. Mm -hmm. Now the taxes though are not being treated like alcohol. The taxes are pretty outrageous. Hmm. They have a um, federal lawsuit that was filed against uh, the governor of uh, Colorado and I believe the um, attorney general and the treasurer okay. and the uh, Department of Revenue there okay. for being kingpins. Kingpins? King, uh, controlled substances, there's a um, statute in, uh, some statutes in the Controlled Substances Act that makes you a kingpin if you're dealing with, with drugs and money, mm -hmm. money laundering. Huh. So when they take in the taxes, they're laundering illegal money into the bank that the government commingles all their money in. Right, okay. So they're commingling illegal tax, illegal gotten money that they call taxes in with all the rest of their budgetary um and that's stuff. allowable oh well <laughs> no <laughs> it's not allowable but they're doing it the federal government um in congress uh, the house of representatives has decided to pass um a statement that's saying that they they want to allow banks to uh, accept the money so that you don't have all this cash floating around out there and creating a, a big situation where there's going to be robberies and people, you know, getting in themselves in trouble and killed and, and stuff like that for having a cash business. How do you respond to the media's involvement in this? Are they educating the people <coughs> on both sides? Yeah, there's definitely a pro well, and a con about this whole issue of marijuana, right? Yes, there is, and it all depends on what media that you speak with. Um, there's some media out there that are that are interested in getting down on the nitty gritty and the truth of stuff, and there's others that are on the, the government side that just beat the government's drum and report whatever they report. So if they say, well, it's illegal, then you've got a news report that says it's illegal. Okay. If they say it's legal, then you got a news report that says it's legal. So it all comes from you know who's what area is being enforced at. You know, on the media side. Right, 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 right. When I think about two, two of the major medias that we have here, we've got the, the Oregonian on one side here in Port, in, in Oregon, and we've got the Columbia, right? When you think in in the uh, Vancouver area. Correct. Right Those there. are the two major. Two major entities right here within this area. That's right there. Are they doing a good job? Um, in my opinion, no. Depends on the reporter themselves. Mm. Okay. Because um, some some of the reporters are very biased. Some of them are not. Some of them actually have medical cannabis cards, medical marijuana cards like these here in Oregon. Um, I don't know of any over in Washington yet that has uh, their medical authorization. Really? That's in the Colombian. 
but I, I know there's a few that are in the, the Oregonian that have theirs. Yeah. And it's more liberal here, mm -hmm. you know, in, in Oregon. It really is. Mm -hmm. I think it was 1975 that they passed a law here um, in Oregon making it a misdemeanor. Okay. So, so where does this stand with Washington? If one gets... On medical marijuana, they just, um, Division One just came down here um, with Cannabis Action Coalition versus the City of Kent case. Um, they said that uh, pe uh, qualifying patients and their designated providers um, are, it's an illegal conduct and activity and that the local jurisdictions can ban that type of activity. So people that are not medical and they have an ounce of marijuana, mm -hmm. totally legal. If you're a medical patient and you have an ounce, totally legal, but you go over that ounce and now all of a sudden you're a criminal. Really? So if you're in medical treatment, authorized medical treatment through your, your doctor, which is the one that has the final say-so, mm -hmm. whether you can use or not, for um, finding your, the medical conditions under the act, um, they're saying that that is now um, an illegal conduct for the patients to grow and stuff like that so it's an affirmative defense mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than being um, an outright not a crime mm -hmm. um, Senate Bill 5073 that was passed the governor kind of chopped it up the Oregon White. Washington White. okay um, and it was kind of interesting how um, the, the court itself chopped it up even more <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah um, we had the Supreme Court uh, in the state of Washington rule in a uh, medical necessity, uh, common law medical necessity case, State v. Kurtz, that ruled that uh, medical necessity is um, is a defense and that it's, it wasn't abrogated uh, by the uh, medical marijuana statute. Okay. So they also um, found that um, they referenced two the law being passed of uh, nobody shall be arrested uh, or arrested, prosecuted, searched, and, and stuff like that. Um, and they ignored that case. Hmm. They said it was just dicta because they didn't go through, nobody um, briefed all the issues. They briefed different issues. And the interesting thing about that case is that the Supreme Court of the state of Washington had mentioned that um, being a Schedule One drug right. does have medicinal use, so that it, it doesn't follow the federal law. The federal law says medical marijuana has no medicinal use whatsoever. So if you go and look at the Washington state law and you look at the federal law, Washington state law says even though it's a Schedule One drug, there is medical use. So it's a prescription. In all, pre in all pretenses. <laughs> There's a lot of people out there that want to argue about whether it's a prescription or not. <laughs> you go and they go, oh, it's a, you know, you can't have it a prescription under federal law. Well, if you actually get down to the nitty gritty is, is that you cannot have a pharmaceutical mm -hmm. prescription for marijuana mm -hmm. and get it from a pharmaceutical industry, which is what the federal law runs, pharmaceutical products pharmaceutical drug products specifically for sale on the market through a specific channel. Right. Marijuana is not covered under those guidelines hmm. because it's not a um, drug product, number one, and it's not an isomer. It's made up of, uh, I think, 400 and some odd different isomers and, and so on. And Congress only decided that they were going to outlaw THC, which is the main ingredient which makes people get high on. Yeah. That's the main ingredient that causes a psychoactive reaction that, you know, makes you stoned. Mm -hmm. or, or relieves your pain center, so to speak, and puts a block on it, help, help put a block on it. And it operates on a different basis than like opiates. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then in Washington, yeah, you made some comments about Washington, the enforcers that are, now in Oregon, in Oregon isn't, hasn't passed this law yet. Recreational, no. Yes. It's, um, 
I think it's called uh, New Approach Oregon. Put New forth, approach. put forth a um, petition to, for recreational use, just okay. the same as uh, Washington. Okay. So that's um, they got enough uh, signatures. So it's going on the ballot. So you're going to get to vote for it in November. What about what about the what about Oregon? That's what I'm saying in, in Oregon, Oregon. In Oregon, okay. Yeah, you're going to get to vote on it on recreational marijuana here in Oregon in November. What do you think? Go for it. Is it you think that's going? What, what do you think? Then? I think it'll pass. But now, you know, when I think about the, the two gubernatorial candidates, uh, Representative Richardson and, uh, and Kitts Gov Governor Kitzhopper, both, that position was, in, in, they had no position other than the fact that uh, uh, they were going to look at uh, wait and watch the state of Washington and also the state of Colorado. I think what they were trying to portray or put across is, is the um, federal government had said that they're not going to preempt or, or sue to preempt either one of those states, state laws, to shut them down. <coughs> Which I, um, I think is what they were trying to get, a get at is that um, they want to wait and see how everything maneuvers as far as if the federal government's going to come in and try and swat it down or if they're just going to let it go and how long they're going to let it go and see right. before they want to step in and try and do something. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of, um, James Cole, had, had they had uh, some hearings in Congress over this issue and he said that he would rather not try and preempt the state law because then what happens is that you have no control whatsoever, no regulation over this type of stuff. Mm. Yes, yes. So when that happens, it's a free-for-all and they don't have the money to go after everybody in that situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty limited on what they're able to do you know, all across the United States if it's a free-for-all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what's, what's out on the street right now in regards to the to Washington's involvement in this issue, it's sort of like, is it is it is, is it a done deal now? I mean, people are able to smoke marijuana in Washington. Yeah, they've got a uh, few stores open. Okay. There's supposed to be 334 stores throughout the state that are for retail. Now, well, they haven't got them all up and running yet, but that's how many licenses right. they the maximum that they've cut out of. And their swath is 334 um, licensed retail stores throughout the state right. in different areas and jurisdictions. Mm. Um, a lot of um, jurisdictions are banning the use. Um, they're not allowing any applications to be filed for uh, land use permits, uh, building permits. They're not allowing any, any buildings or any land to be used for um, propagation of uh, any marijuana at all. And what about the banks? The, it's my understanding they can't uh, they can't deposit the money well, at the end of the day to the banks. I mean, what, what's that all about? That all depends on how they how how they structure themselves. If they come up and say, "Well, I'm a a marijuana business," banks will not deal with you. They they don't want anything to do with it because they got to fill out too much paperwork. Hmm. And then if the paperwork isn't right, and the person they got to keep an eye on the business. From what the federal government has said they want the banks to keep an eye on the business to make sure that they're not doing anything illegal mm. so it's kind of interesting the banks don't want to do that they've got other customers to deal with you see. and they don't want to do all this reporting on illegal activity mm. they've got enough going on but what about that uh, the banks not being involved in that process i mean what, what aren't there many loopholes in danger and what people own that kind of money in the shop? Well, the loophole is is that instead of identifying yourself as a medical marijuana in industry business, you start a different business and shift all your money over into that, kind of like a shell company. Mm. And you're running a different name that looks like a different entity. Yeah. So that the, for the bank purposes, so that they don't go, you know, thumb their nose at you and go, no, we're not going to take your money. <laughs> now, there's a couple of... Um, uh, not banks, but um, credit unions in the state of Washington that are, that are interested in doing business with 
with the marijuana industry. Mm. And they are today, they, they have a few accounts open. Mm. Mm. So we'll have to see how that plays out. <laughs> so, but it is really interesting that Congress, uh, the House of Representatives of Congress, um, passed a bill that said that um, they want to authorize the banks to deal with uh, marijuana industry, the marijuana industry period, whether it be medical or recreational, to keep the cash off the market. Mm -hmm. It's a very dangerous situation where you're dealing you know, with everything with cash. I mean, robberies, killings. There was a gentleman a couple of years ago that um, got robbed in an alleyway from a site of a dispensary. He had a half a million dollars on him and they killed him. Mm -hmm. and they caught up to the people that, that eventually and prosecuted them for it. But they had, they had his merchandise. And he had a half million dollars cash. See. And they killed him and robbed him for it. Yeah. So it's and that's still in force today, meaning that they can't take the monies to the banks. Correct. Why, why did they do that? Because the bank, if it's a federal crime, it's called money laundering. It's uh, under the kingpin statutes. So if you take the money that you've gotten from an illegal source, and they call selling marijuana an illegal source. Yeah. Well, now, so, are we ready to go? Are we ready to come in, in, in Oregon now, in regards to uh, the look and see uh, in, in, in Vancouver? Or should I? Or maybe I should go back to Vancouver and say, say that uh, are there any more loopholes now that uh, now that the law was passed? I mean, people when you are, say loopholes. Loopholes from the standpoint of any prevent preventive type measures. They still you think that uh, the law has been passed? Everybody's uh, smoking weed. Uh, Right? Allowed to smoke well, weed yeah. up to 20 years old, right? Uh, 21 and older. Hmm. Just like alcohol. Interesting. Interesting. You know, it's pretty interesting, too, that um, in Washington they've got a 75% tax, or 25%, let me rephrase that, 25% um, tax at each level from a uh, producer processor and a retailer. Now a producer and processor can be one and the same and only have a 25% tax. But generally you've got a 75% uh, excise tax. Mm -hmm. You've got, a, I believe it's a 10% sales tax. And then you've got your B&O taxes. So by the time it's said and done, they were just uh, advertising here last week that it was selling for $25 a gram. Wow. Yeah. That's a real wow. That's eleven thousand over eleven thousand dollars a pound. Wow, that is uh, crazy. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez, wow. Yeah, I'm sort of reminded of a of a, of a uh, nature movie that I just seen talking about eels. Comparable, you know, eels at one point in time was twenty five cents a pound. Now it's twenty five hundred dollars a pound. The Japanese are picking it all up. It's mind blowing. It, it is very much so. Look, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to go on and take a short break, and we're going to come back here with James and uh, get get a little bit more. Maybe he'll give us some other good little excitement now that this thing is, is passed, and and uh, get some feeling in terms of what what are going to be the the response, if you what he thinks might be the response of the citizenry, okay, and the user. We'll be right back. Take. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
locals. Okay, federal. welcome back, folks. Uh, we are talking about marijuana today, and then that's the up and coming uh, uh, drink, if you will, right? Well, speaking of that, they have. Uh, with James, by the way, with James Barber. I just, I thought, he, since he's brought in, come on in, James. Let's talk. Let's talk. Well, you're talking about drink? Well, I'm just saying, you know, how about drink, marijuana? Smoke? How about marijuana sodas or marijuana beer? You mean they're making that too? Oh, yeah. How about marijuana champagne? What? Well, now, yeah. Right now? Yeah. What are some, what are have some of the not, other? Have you not heard of that yet, Bruce? Well, I've heard of the brownies and they, I remember that stuff. The brownie stuff. And what was the other one? The cookies. Cookies. The and candies. Stuff. The candies and whatever. Hard candies. But, but now you, 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 you talk, you're talking about the, it's other than pop. Soda pop, yeah. And different flavors. and You know, there's a, actually, I think it's a, a drink that's coming out of uh, Kelso, Washington, or Longview area. Now. Right now. And it's called Legal. What's called Legal? It's called Legal. And, and what, is it in stores, in regular stores? Um, no, it's in the um, recreational and um, and uh, medical cannabis uh, dispensaries. Dispensaries. And who can, who can, who can pick up those, uh, those pops? Anybody over 21. Yeah, but you got to have to have a card, right? You have to have no, uh, for recreational purposes, anybody over 21. Can pick up anything. Can anything. Pick any champagne, egg. the whole nine yards. Well, not yet here in Washington with the champagne. That's more of the medical side. And they, they're doing that a lot down in California. I see. And I, I think there's a few places in Colorado that has, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I think I've read in the news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've well, definitely read about it. Mm -hmm. Well, now tell me, what, what do you think about this, 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 this law that's on the book, if you will? Not a law on the book, but uh, this piece of, uh, that's on the book. About, you think it's going to pass in Oregon? As far as the initiative? Yeah. For recreational use? Right. I think it will. They got, so I think the signatures were like 80 something thousand or 90 okay. something thousand. Okay. They got uh, like 160,000 signatures. Hmm. Okay. To, to bring in. So, and, and it was pretty amazing to, for them to bring that many signatures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the biggest signature gathering for marijuana in, the st in Oregon history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, mm -hmm. You know, to have that many signatures right, and right, right. Well, over we do, over what the limit is. You know? Yeah, we we do know that the uh, that there are a number of adults, many adults, if you will, are smoking marijuana in this state. I think us baby boomers are probably the ones that started that out. Okay. All right, mm -hmm. and, and they're keeping it going. You know, if I were to ask you on the other side of the the, the the spectrum from the standpoint of what are some of the concerns of of some of the other citizenry? You mean like parents? Like the, the parents. parents like the, let's say the parents of the baby boomers. You know, they've got some concern. You know, those are, those are the seniors on the other level, right? And um, uh, they have some concerns. And what do you, what do you say to those those folks? Lighten up. In what way? Well, y'all authorized alcohol in the older generation, y'all authorized tobacco in the older generation, and banned marijuana. Alcohol and, can and um, tobacco kill more people in the United States. It's ridiculous. And, and the health risks. Now let's flip the page to marijuana. How many children have ever died of a marijuana overdose? Hmm. How many? None. How many humans in, in 5,000 years has there ever been a death from an overdose of marijuana? No. It's impossible to overdose to the point of death well, of marijuana. Well, why are they missing the acceptance on the other side? Because it's a... Uh, They've been brainwashed. In what way? What you, what, what they brainwashed? How? You mean? Well. And who? And who would lead the brainwashing? It was the federal government. It was during the Nixon Nixon years, where they uh, decided to say that uh, marijuana, which is not cannabis, marijuana is a is a slang term that they brought up because immigrants were using it, non-whites. So it became it Harry Aslinger's little game to pick on immigrants and use marijuana as the whipping post, so to speak. Hmm. So they made it illegal. And then you've got, you've got a lot of um, 
people that say it was because of the, the um, synthetic industry that came along and um, chain, put forth legislation because they wanted synthetics and uh, different fibers, fabrics and stuff like that instead of using the hemp or the fiber from the marijuana plant to, you know, for um, clothing and textiles and um, the oils for, for fuel and stuff like that. They came up with different, more what they thought was a better industry. Hmm. Okay. But when you actually take a look at it, the industries that they created are polluting the heck out of our planet and killing us. Hmm. Hmm. So hmm. when you when you actually look at what they did, it's it's atrocious, and they all did it for reasons that are ridiculous. Hmm. Well, hey folks, look, we're going to try to open up the line. It'll probably take a couple of minutes. Once you see the number on the screen, you can give us a call. Okay, just give us a call. We'll, we'll just continue talking. But if you got any 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 concerns, right? Yeah. 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 Just just throw them out there on the table, and um, you know whether you're a parent, uh, whatever, and whether you're an employer, whether you're an employer who have some concerns a lot of times, uh, or whatever. So give us a call. As soon as you see it on the screen, you can just give us a call. Okay. So now no, it's kind of interesting. You mentioned employers. Right. Okay. Now that's one one big thing uh, as far as the. Um, drug-free America contracts for employers, um, suspicionless drug testing, okay? And, uh, and it's always been an issue with me that if you go and urinate into a cup for your drug testing, yeah. that they're, they're actually um, illegally, kind of violates the Fourth Amendment. And that would be for a, a government agency, but not uh, I don't believe that would be for a, a private entity. But I believe it would be um, privacy laws that they violate on that sense. Because if, if you're driving down the road, in, in, say in Washington, there's a, a five uh, milliliter, 0.5, kind of like, yeah, it's 0.5, a milliliter per, um, for testing. Hmm. So if you go and you urinate in, in a cup, and they have to have a warrant to uh, take your blood to test you, to see if you're okay. impaired or not. Okay. So it, it kind of goes the same thing with hmm. um, being impaired on the job. Okay. I mean, that's generally what people are, most employers are interested in, is are you impaired on the job? Hmm. Can you function? Can you do your job? Hmm. Look like we've got, look like we've got, um, we've got the number on the screen, and if you'd like to give us a call, uh, do give us a call. Look like we have someone on the online now. Uh, call your your question or comment, please. Well, several comments um, on right there on your channel on channel eleven on Portland Community Media Television. Every Friday night, there's a show called Cannabis Common Sense. Okay. And it reverberates a lot of what your uh, gentleman guest there has been saying. And on that very same show, a couple of times, I've seen a about a two minute long. A video clip with the American Medical Association in 1937 uh, testifying in front of Congress, and they were asking, they said, because that was the year marijuana was made illegal, uh, you know, across the United States. Medical. Some states enacted uh, uh, illegal, you know, made it illegal prior to that, but uh, it was still legal in most of the states. Okay. And uh, these American Medical Association doctors were actually lobbying Congress and said, Please don't take this valuable substance away from us because it has no known side effects. Hmm. And when you watch the show, Cannabis Common Sense, every Friday night, a lot of times Paul Stanford, the uh, host of the show, uh, will bring in his old uh, antique collection, uh, part of his old antique collection of uh, cannabis medical bottles. Hmm. And these uh, have every name on you can think of, Eli Lilly, Park Davis, yeah. Johnson & Johnson, really? Squibb. And these bottles date all the way back to the 1800s, all the way up to the 1930s. And cannabis was one of the, the safest, most effective, least side effect uh, substance out there to deal with a, a myriad of health problems. Okay. And But yet these uh, stinking scoundrels took it away from us back in 1937. And on top of that, the industrial hemp could literally save this planet from the toilet hole that it's going down right now with all the fracking 
and the corrections that they're dumped, they dumped a bunch of stuff called correction into the Gulf of Mexico when they had the oil spill several years ago. And that is banned in any other part of the world. And if we had, if we spilled hemp seed into the Gulf of Mexico, the wildlife would thrive. Same thing that happened up in Valdez, Alaska back in the 80s when they had a drunk sea captain plow a ship into the, uh, into the uh, land there, into the beach. Okay. Okay. And the oil, the toxic, tarry garbage that is crude oil is still, you can go up there and lift any rock anywhere in that, in that uh, beach. Still there. And it's still there. And cannabis uh, uh, has never hurt anyone. And earlier you guys mentioned something about children and, and uh, drugs. And there is no mechanism, and I've heard this directly from a professor of pharmacology and toxicology, 91-year-old uh, uh, retired uh, college professor, medical doctor, and professor of toxicology and pharmacology Dr. Dr. Lebec. Lebec. He yeah. said there's no mechanism in cannabis that can actually shut down your breathing or cause an erratic heartbeat like that can happen to you with caffeine, nicotine, or alcohol. Mm. And uh, longtime cigarette smokers know this. If you're a longtime cigarette smoker, uh, it basically destroys the chemoreceptors in your aortic arch that helps you uh, uh, subconsciously breathe without thinking about it. And uh, the two breathing receptors we have in our bodies are our medulla oblongata, which is the uh, base of our brain, our brain stem. And then the other thing that drives us to breathe is our aortic arch. And nicotine, which has been promoted in this country for so long, has poisoned so many people. And it makes me sick, because I know, because for an EMT for 35 years, I'm now retired, I've seen the the death and destruction caused by alcohol, nicotine, and even uh, caffeine to some degree. Uh, I, I mean, I've seen 28-year-old executives in their office having uh, severe chest pains because they probably had too much caffeine on board. And uh, it's a total crime against humanity that cannabis was ever made illegal in the first place. Amen. Basically, it was William Randolph Hearst and Standard Oil Company and Henry J. Anslinger who was the little uh, uh, fascist Nazi who uh, brought about the prohibition of marijuana, he was married to Rockefeller's daughter. And they had two between the Hearst family, which had all their timber interests, and the Rockefeller family, which had their petroleum interests. They wanted to see cannabis and marijuana go away. Uh, and there's a movie that most people don't believe this. They're astounded when I tell them. I says, go look at hemp.org and you will see a movie on there that you can watch that our United States government made, our United States Department of Agriculture made in February Victory 1942, right after the war, the World War II was only, what, two and a half months old, and it, the name of the movie is called Hemp for Victory, Hemp for Victory. and I think it was narrated by the same guy who did the Victory, it's C uh, of uh, film clips, but the point of it is, is that we needed all kinds of uh, fabric and cordage and by the way, when you make paper out of industrial hemp, my understanding, you basically need a very strong form of hydrogen peroxide. When hydrogen peroxide breaks down, it breaks down essentially into harmless uh, substances similar to water or water itself. Mm. If you go by any paper mill today and you go in and you look at their MSDS sheet, their material safety data sheet, their hazardous chemical sheet, you will find chlorine acid and a bunch of other chemicals that are so toxic. I mean, that's why every time when you drive nearby a paper mill, it actually makes you want to throw up. Mm -hmm. And if anybody's ever, I, I used to go up and race motocross at Washougal all the time back in the 70s and 80s and even into the 90s. Back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And every time mm -hmm. I drive by that paper mill up there in Canvas, I would actually, I mean, I'd, you know, feel nauseous uh, until about the time I got to the track 20 minutes later. So the point of it is, is that cannabis could save this world. Uh, if we quit growing all the garbage food that we grow now, like wheat, barley, rye, and oats, which all contain gluten, and corn, which we can't even digest, even ruminant animals can't digest. It. So, Colin, Colin, hold on uh, a second. Colin, tell yeah, me something. We quit growing yeah, 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 all this stuff, and including dairy and soy. Okay, hold on. Caller? Caller? Right now, all the industrial hemp hey, Carla? comes from Canada. Yeah. 
he must be there. Hey, caller, can you hold for a second? Caller. Hey, caller. And you see any kind of hemp protein powder, uh, hemp oil, uh, all that stuff comes from, mostly comes from Canada. Caller. We're going to take another caller now, caller. The good old DEA, which is the uh, kind of like the butt boy for the uh, uh, petroleum and the pharmaceutical industry, they're doing the dirty work. Don't let him talk. Yeah, but you got, you got to listen. You can't just, you just uh, uh, can't do that. Now. Okay. Well, Carla, you, are you still there? Oh, he's, he's not there anymore? Well, Carla, look, uh, we, had, we had a couple other callers coming on. But, um, for, for, again, for the caller standpoint, uh, so why are we having this, this, this objection by uh, uh, still the population, the, the, the voting public? There's still, a, there's still a, a sizable number of folks who are saying no to this marijuana situation. It's called fear. Fear, you know what what? fear stands for? Okay. False evidence appearing real. Okay. They're being misled, like I said, and just like the caller said, nobody's ever died from it. Children have no child has ever died from it. But you go and you look at the statistics. You look right. at the, the the drug product industry. It kills kids. You got parents giving their children pharmaceutical drug products that have been prescribed from their doctors. They go to the pharmacy, they pick it up, they give it to their children, and their children are in the emergency room and, or they're dead. Because of why? Because it operates on a different system. Cannabis products, cannabis itself does not operate in the brain, like the gentleman would say, to, to shut off your, your breathing or your heart. Mm -hmm. okay, it doesn't affect that. Hmm. Operates on a total different system. So, so, so there's why, no why, toxicology, so to speak. There, there's got to be something about money in terms of, uh, plays a role in this business. Well, well of course. So, what, so who, it all, who, it all who would be who would be impacted on the money side, the economic side, if in fact uh, uh, this bill passes and all of a sudden people are all, all throughout the country, uh, you know, marijuana is accepted, accepted just like a, like basically be on the shelf, just like like alcohol. What's the problem with that? No, I'm just asking the question. Who would be who would be affected? Well, it all depends on when you say affected. There's a positive effect and there's a negative effect. Would everybody go to basically uh, rolling a joint as opposed to drinking alcohol? Oh, absolutely. Is that right? Oh yeah, you'd, so, you'd have less domestic violence problems. So the alcohol industry would pretty now. Well. One thing though, you'd have a definitely food problem because everybody'd hit the refrigerator. They'd all be hungry and they'd want to just rob the refrigerator instead of going out and trying to rob somebody else or trying to com commit uh, a violent act. I don't know anybody who's ever smoked marijuana that wants to beat people up. I don't know anybody that's ever smoked marijuana that wants to go fight or, or commit a crime. Mm. They usually want to sit back, be mellow, and not be bothered with silliness in life. Mm. You, you understand what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. I'm just, and yeah, I, you. You've been to the bars. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. You, you go into a bar and in and, and the atmosphere is everybody wants to you know start drinking and then you have those ones that are, that are alcoholics. Yeah, it's an issue. Yeah, it's an issue. Okay. And the next thing you know, there's a bar fight. The next thing you know, there's somebody getting shot hmm. just over drinking. It has nothing to do with the money situation. You know, kind of like if you're doing a cash business for the marijuana sales. We're mm -hmm. not talking about that. We're just talking about consumption. Okay. So these shops with users and with medical marijuana, when they sit, when they're going in these these little areas, or restaurants or shops, and smoking there readily, whatever they can they can smoke there, right? Um, there's a couple of uh, areas here in, in uh, Portland I know that there's right. I think it was some, in northeast um, and whatever lounges that you can right, go into. Right, 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 and smoke marijuana and, and, okay. and vaporize. Well, what has been the what has, what's been the crime situation in, in those kind of environments? I don't know that there has been any okay. other, other than being, you know, law enforcement going in and committing crimes on, you know, beating people up and hauling them off to jail or, you know, taking their property or stuff like that. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, that's what I consider a crime hmm. when it comes is to that, Is it legal? I mean, what were we saying? They're, they're, they're no, just that's not out. legal when they go and do that. No, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, but, but, if, but if they got a, a certified store or whatever, I mean, yeah, if they have a certified store, then there's why would the law enforcement go in there and, and, and try and 
take their their property mm -hmm. kind of like what they were doing in down in california with them with the medical marijuana industry down there they were just kicking in their doors raiding them and beating people mm -hmm. up and hauling them off to jail and stealing mm -hmm. their property and selling it and mm -hmm. claiming that oh gosh it's a schedule one drug it's federally mm -hmm. illegal mm -hmm. they're completely ignoring state law i was hearing about washington there was there was a little note someone that came across uh, the airways saying that um, uh, maybe, maybe one or two of the stores were busted or something. They were, they were preventing from from selling or whatever. What's what's that all about? In Washington? Yeah, anything happened in Washington? It's called a ban. It's called a ban. It's called a ban. They ban any zoning or, or um, permit authorizations, meaning that the local jurisdiction says you can't do that in our in our jurisdiction. And they've you have done, to go outside. They're doing that now. They're they're doing they're doing they're that. doing that all across the United States. Mm -hmm. with, play it with uh, states that are um, authorizing, that are voting in, or the legislature's promulgating rules for... So it's still an ongoing fight to, to, oh, yeah, to it's, ban it's, marijuana. It's at the local level, yeah. At the local level. At the local level. The states are pro starting to um, wake up to the, the health and safety of, of their citizens, okay? And with the fact that it's never killed anybody, um, I think that's a very, very prominent safety and health issue. Yeah to um, supersede, so to speak, the, the deaths of, you know, the people through the pharmaceutical industry when you take those type of drugs. Um, you know, you see these advertisements on TV. You've got all kinds of funky conditions that can happen to you if you take this medication. Mm -hmm. and, you know, have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. You watch the commercials where mm -hmm. they, you know, <laughs> come up with this new medication and say, yeah. oh, well, you can take this, but yeah, right, right, right. The, yeah. side effects are, yeah, it can yeah, kill you. Yeah. Okay, I mean, is the, is the ultimate bottom line. I mean, why would anybody want to take something for efficacy, for a malady that may ultimately kill you? Uh, it's, that's suicide. And I, I, it's, it's kind of crazy that they would take the, the, the medical cannabis or the cannabis out of the medical industry and put something in its place that'll kill you mm -hmm. you know you, you, you I mean, is it is it the best thing for our, our our society is it the best thing for parents with children mm -hmm. to go and say okay well let's make things legal for profit that can kill you but mm -hmm. things that have no possibility of killing you whatsoever let's make those illegal and let's mm -hmm. have a false impression about it mm -hmm. because of what our ancestors have told us Okay. Let's talk about economics to to government, if you will, like the economics to this, to the, to the state, uh, to whatever. Uh, when, when you when you compare the taxes that are imposed on marijuana, and you and compare the, compare that with the alcohol, which is higher? Oh, definitely marijuana. From what I've seen, the statistics you've got uh, a maximum seventy five percent excise tax in the state of Washington for for uh, sales a marijuana correct what, what's, Each, what's there's three levels for the marijuana. recreational what, what, what about what about alcohol um, alcohol is a, is a lot cheaper I think it's um, gosh the last time I think I looked at that was about eight eight to twelve percent depending mm -hmm. on on where you're at mm -hmm. I could be wrong on those those numbers. Mm -hmm. I, I don't drink alcohol. But 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 it's 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 higher than you know. The marijuana is higher, higher most than, definitely. Yeah. Interesting. Even though even though they promulgate the rules and the, it comes in and says, well, let's treat it like alcohol. Well, if mm -hmm. you're going to treat it like alcohol, let's do that all the way through, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. including the taxes. Mm -hmm. What about another? If you're going to be fair about it. So okay. if you want to be unfair about it, I th I think that you're just trying to be a kingpin and launder money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think this idea of, of the uh, bank not being able to uh, a user, not, not user, but a business person who's basically selling marijuana, uh, being prevented uh, from basically depositing their income, their, their nightly receipts there or whatever? I think that's completely wrong, to be honest with you. It, it, it creates what are they trying to do? What, what are they trying to do? Well, what do you think they're trying to do when they, when they say no to that? The, the statutes say that it's a schedule one drug and if you sell a schedule one drug you're a kingpin and you if you use the proceeds from that it's money laundering <coughs> Excuse me. so when you go into um, that realm you've got the banking industry laws 
you've got the Controlled Substances Act laws, and they do this. They don't jive. They don't mm. mesh because of the kingpin laws. If they were to, if the federal government was to come along and, and reschedule yeah. marijuana or take it off of the, the Controlled Substances Act or specifically promulgate rules that um, allow banks, it says that they will not be civilly or criminally um, penalties put against them. I think they, that would probably be a better way for that to happen, for mm -hmm. the banks to open up and actually give out accounts where people don't have to, you know, they can actually use their, their name of their business and they don't have to create some type of a shell corporation or a different company to funnel the money into so that um, the banks don't raise red flags to themselves and say, oh, you're a marijuana business, I don't want to deal with you because I gotta, it creates too much paperwork for me and it might put me at jeopardy because I have to keep an eye on you mm -hmm. per the federal government. Hmm. But I, I think if they if they change the the statutes, the Congress came in and actually uh, actually if the Senate voted on the House bill that was just passed, I think that would probably be the best hmm. avenue, and it would settle a lot of controversy. Hmm. Okay, good. Well, look, James, it looks like we spent quite a bit of time on this issue, and the gentleman that called, I mean, that was some good information that he shared with us. Well, Certainly, yeah. to cut him off, but the bottom line is that they can look at this other show, and that's, that's good, too, because the idea is that we have to be informed. We, we, we really have to educate ourselves about this process, because it's been said that this will be law, and this, this stuff will eventually be around, all around the country, available. So I think it's very important to get the information out, and, the, and thank you for, for being with us and sharing this with us. We've got about another... Ten seconds. Really I want to say I, I want to say to all the parents out there, educate yourself before you go and say no. Okay. On that note, thank you very much, folks. We'll see you next week with another another guest. Have a good one. Good, James.